power and politics, a subject people just love to talk about. So I thought with the 48th and 49th governors of our state of New Jersey, let's talk about how the power of the office of governor came about through the decades and, and the centuries. And Governor Florio, to begin with you, the first governor, William Livingston, served a one-year term selected by the legislature back then. He was the first governor under the state constitution in 1776. So did the power then lie with the legislature, the real power? Well, we have to keep in mind the historic setting in which this was taking place. The country is in the process of thinking about getting rid of the king, didn't like the power of the king, and therefore they were trying to put together a system that would be able to control executive authority, executive power, and the legislature was thought of as the best way of keeping control. Short terms was a good way of keeping control. Now Livingston was um, chosen by the legislature a number of times, 14 to be exact, and he had a, a lot of responsibility. He was a delegate to the Constitutional Convention, and he played a big role in getting New Jersey to ratify the Constitution. So, so how did that affect his power over, over those years, Governor? He was commander of the colonial militia during the during Revolutionary War. Uh, so he was the most prominent person in New Jersey, one of the people really responsible for our freedom. And so they elected him time after time after time, but he really didn't have much power. The legislature didn't have the power in those days. So we're going to jump forward in time by quite a bit, about 75 years or so, to the Constitution in 1844, the revision uh, of the powers of the governor of the state. I guess New Jersey was uh, increasing in population, and so the governor was taking on more, more of a role, more responsibilities. Well, the nation was changing dramatically. Um, New Jersey was changing dramatically. And accordingly, you needed more executive authority to manage the system. And the governor, it's gotten more progressively complicated. So as you have more complications, you need more efficiency. And executive authority is regarded as more efficient than the diffuse authority that comes from the legislature. So at that time, was it an increase then in perhaps appointments, veto power, executive authority um, that, that made the governorship more powerful? Not much. No. <laughs> A little more power, but not much. Uh, really, until that convention was held in the 40s, that was that was the, the that 1947. Was the, that was the key convention. moment. That was the most important moment, I think, in maybe in New all of New Jersey history. And how so? Well, uh, before then, the governor had been weak. New Jersey had been failing in issue after issue. The people were dissatisfied, and you had reformers like Arthur Vanderbilt, who was out there really campaigning for change, but he kept running against against the bosses, particularly Mayor Haig and they didn't like each other and nothing got done because Haig blocked every single thing. And then Driscoll got elected, Governor Driscoll. Governor Driscoll understood what had to happen. He sent Vanderbilt to vacation in Maine <laughs> and he went to see Haig <laughs> and he said, well, let's make a deal. And so nothing's changed in no, a lot of ways. nothing's <laughs> changed in that way. He made a deal with Haig. Driscoll already had the rest, most of the rest of the state on board through um, persuasion and for politics and everything else. And so when Vanderbilt got back, Driscoll had the two sides together in the Constitutional Convention, and they created the most powerful governorship in the country, and one that I think has served the state very, very well over the years. Well, governors, thank you very much for, for sharing your views on the governorship of New Jersey. Governor Kane, Governor Florio, a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.